Hello and welcome to the video where we're going to be looking at putting together a steampunk sculpture. Now as you can see this thing's pretty large and it's grown somewhat since the original idea that I had. The idea came from a few different places. Uh, the primary point was the Asylum Steampunk Festival that I went to last year which is held in Lincoln in the UK. Each year they have an exhibition of artwork and it can be anything, it can kind of be costumes, models, um, some sculpture. And, but this year there was quite a lot of comic book art which I thought was really really impressive and I started thinking that perhaps I could do something that was equally elaborate uh, but in sculptural form and so the basic idea for this is that it's like the cover of a comic book but as a model uh, and so to that end I've been trying to work in lots and lots of detail obviously the characters um, fairly dynamic um, I just really wanted it to look as impressive as some of the artwork that I saw Another piece of inspiration was actually some AI art that I saw online and this is the image in question and I just found it really striking. I really like the colouring and the kind of high collar of the uh, character and the colour of the hair against the costume so I found that a really striking image and I know there's been quite a lot of, uh, sort of controversy online about AI art and I don't want to start an argument in the comments or anything like that but um, i got to say I don't really have too much of a problem with it so I think it's something that I think that hasn't really been spoken about quite so much is the sort of feedback loop between AI art and human artists. So in this case, I saw an image that had been created by, by AI, and that inspired me to make a real piece of art um, in the real world. So I think there's a bit of a feedback loop going on where the AI art is creating some interesting images, which is then inspiring human artists to make artwork themselves. And that's something I haven't really seen discussed quite so much. I know a lot of people have said that the, art, the AI is uh, trained on libraries of copyrighted images and I think that's probably true but but so am I <laughs> you know I've been trained on images from films and artists that I like over the years and I think I kind of do what the AI does really I kind of take elements of artwork that's inspired me and I kind of mash them together and make my own pieces so um I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing, but I'm kind of doing exactly the same thing that the AI, AI algorithms are doing. Um, so anyway, that's a little bit of background about this piece. Uh, but in this video, we're going to be going through how I put this together and all the various techniques I use. So uh, let's get started. I decided to take a slightly different approach with this figure than from others that I've made previously. Previously I've made a wire armature and sculpted over that. However, in this case I actually made use of some moulds that I'd made for a previous project. Some years back I decided to make myself an Iron Man model. Um, at the time this uh, figure by Hot Toys wasn't available, uh, but I really really wanted it and so I was looking at it going well maybe I could actually do that myself, you know. So to that end I decided to make a uh, blank body effectively that I would make some cloth clothes to go over and then make some additional plastic pieces to replicate the sort of mechanical parts. So. I made a blank body which is sort of fairly roughly sculpted and made moulds of it. The thinking was that if I ever needed to make a figure I could just cast up these uh, body parts, attach them together in any sort of orientation that I needed and then I'd sort of have the sort of 70% of the uh, figure there ready for me straight away. So I decided to use the moulds that I'd made for that project here. I hadn't actually used them for anything as it turned out, so I decided to use them here. So what I've done is to pour some resin into the moulds and cast up these uh, body parts. As you can see they're pretty rough but that's intentional, they're intended to be sculpted over or for a costume to go over so you're never going to see any of these details. But because they're resin they're quite easy to shape and so what I'm doing is screwing these together into the uh, pose I need and also cutting some of the pieces down. As you may have noticed this is a male figure and I'm actually sculpting a female so I need to sort of make some changes. So I'm making the shoulders less broad uh, and I'm going to build up the hips with um, clay as well. So there's my pose and I've got the arm outstretched and the legs sort of um, walking forward. So I'm pretty happy with that. And the cool thing with this of course is that you can just sort of repose it however you need to until you're happy with it. I've got some fairly large ugly screws sticking out but that doesn't really matter, they're going to be covered with clay. Now as I mentioned uh, this is a male figure and I'm sculpting a female so what I've done is to cover this in monster clay. I just want to make sure that I can actually make it look like a female figure and that the proportions aren't too far off. That's not looking too bad. I've decided to actually shave down the torso a little bit more uh, just so that it doesn't look too out of proportion. 
And as you can see, I've also added some square brass tubing here just so I can take the arm off. That's really useful to be able to take these things apart so you can sculpt pieces separately. So I'm going to start off using this stuff, which is Freeform Sculpt from SmoothOn. It's an epoxy clay, and I used it quite extensively in my previous uh, Mech Suits project to sculpt up the pilot. I found myself using this stuff more and more. I'd originally bought it intending to sculpt with it um, as sort of maybe a replacement for Sculpey, but it's quite sticky, um, and it's quite tricky to work with. And so that sort of put me off, but I've sort of found myself slowly coming back to it more and more. And what I found with this project is um, that there's actually a bit of a learning curve and a bit of a process to working with epoxy clay. And I'm sort of swinging around to actually quite liking it. Now, the thing with um, Sculpey, for example, is that particularly for a figure which is quite complicated, you end up in a situation where you can put in a lot of detail and a lot of work, but you can then end up sort of sticking a finger through it and destroying some of that detail. So what you might tend to want to do is to sort of cook the figure at different stages to sort of finalize those details. So, you know, you might get the sort of main costume done, cook the sculpture, put some details on top of that, then cook the sculpture again. And I don't think there's necessarily any any problem with that. You can keep cooking it, and I don't think it damages the sculpture, but I didn't want to sort of be in a position where I would have to do that. You know, I was a little bit nervous about subjecting this whole thing to heat repeatedly. So I decided to instead use epoxy more frequently for this. And I've had to change my process a little bit in doing that. So whereas before I might want to do the majority of the sculpture uh, before I sort of end up cooking it and finalising it, with epoxy, because it's setting straight away, you actually, you actually have to start doing it in little batches. So I found myself um, actually sort of finding that process quite useful. So you can imagine a situation where you might want to sculpt a harness um, or a belt or something like that. Now, with Sculpey, you'd have to sort of get the entire thing correct uh, before you could cook it and finalise it. With epoxy, it's not quite like that. So um, what, what I found myself doing was sort of putting in the basic shapes and letting the epoxy set, then putting another layer on top of that to add in detail. Now, that's quite useful because um, if you can imagine a situation where you might be pressing against a shape, so say you've got a belt and you want to put a pouch on the belt. If you sculpt the pouch, on top of the belt and the belt isn't set, it's soft clay still, you can end up sort of pushing into the belt and maybe damaging some of the detail you've already put in. Also, um, you might push against that clay and deform the sculpture you've already made. With epoxy, because it's already set, you don't run that risk. And so I actually found that quite useful in that I would have a hard surface to sculpt against whenever I was adding in additional detail. And so having done it for this project, I've actually found myself quite liking it. I'll go into it a little bit more detail when I come to do the boots a little bit later on, and you'll sort of see what I mean. But um, I found, um, yeah, I found epoxy actually quite useful for this project, so I can see myself using it much more frequently in the future. So I'm using the freeform sculpt to get the main forms of the body in place here. It's really useful for that because it dries really, really tough. And so um, if you want some sort of stability to your sculpture, and this stuff really, really helps with that. So this combined with the resin and the, um, the physical um, connections I've used with the screws, I think should give me a really strong um, figure uh, to work with. So now, despite me going on about the virtues of epoxy clay, I'm actually going to use Sculpey here to do some of the body. Um, and the reason for that is because I want to do some detailing, some sort of texture detailing on the clothing uh, for the figure. And the one disadvantage that epoxy has is that obviously it's setting from day one. So um, if you want to put texture into it, you um, only have a very small window to do that. And if you put the texture in and you don't like it, well, the the epoxy is probably on its way to curing by that stage so you can't really come back and adjust so for this sort of work I'm going with Sculpey because I can sort of come back and forth and rework it until I get what I like um, but I only use Sculpey for some of this project so um, this is a real hodgepodge of uh, different materials this piece now what I'm doing here is something you may have seen me do before, is combining the flesh coloured um, Super Sculpey together with the grey firm stuff. Uh, this sort of gives you a bit of an intermediate um, softer clay, which is still opaque, so um, I find this a really nice mix. And I'm just using a uh, pasta roller to do that. So what I'm going to do here is sculpt in a um, shirt, jacket and a corset. 
and I can then cook the sculpture once I'm done with that. Now, I'm fairly sure the sculpt is going to crack when I do that because it's um, it has a tendency to contract. So if you're sculpting over a hard, rigid form, um, there's no space for it to do that. So it does have a tendency to crack. So I'm fully anticipating having to fill in some gaps with this, uh, but that's perfectly fine. I'm using my AI art uh, image uh, to uh, provide some guidance for this. I really like the tall collar and the jacket that the character's wearing, and I'm probably going to paint it blue in the final version. Uh, but I'm not being—I'm not trying to copy it as such. It's really just inspiration. I have to say, I'm not super used to sculpting clothing or fabric, really. So this is a bit of a learning curve, and I've gone back and forth on this quite a lot, trying to get this to look right. So for the course here, I'm cutting in some lines here. These are going to be final details in the uh, in the fabric, but uh, they're also quite useful for guidelines, so I can sort of see what I'm doing. And as you can see here, I've added in some texture into the sculpting. The way I've done this is to use a leather working tool. I did try a variety of bits and pieces. I even bought some cake decorating um, tools uh, to see if they would give me a nice sort of texture. But ultimately, this um, was the uh, thing that I used. It's got quite a sort of a random look to it, so this is quite useful in getting that texture. I suppose it's meant to look a little bit like netting or sort of a 3d fabric something like that and i'm hoping to um, capture a bit more detail in the paint job as well you often see on some corsets there's sort of like a netting effect over a uh, lighter color and so some of the lighter color shows through the dark netting so i'm going to try and capture some of that in the paint job uh, but this sort of random texture should help me um, help me with that Now something I also tried to do was to push in some fabric detail using this piece of cloth and as you can see the Sculpey is picking it up quite well. Um, in the end I ended up extending the clothing using epoxy and so I couldn't really get the texture into that in the same way. So um, a lot of this actually got lost. Um, something I've also done with the whole thing is once the epoxy is set and once I actually cook the Sculpey I actually sanded down a lot of it. That helps sort of um, smooth out some of the shapes. You can smooth Sculpey down to quite a degree, but ultimately the um, the only way to get it really smooth, I find, is to actually sand it uh, using some wire wool. And so I lost some of the texture detail there, but it's it's not too much of a problem. Hopefully, some of it will show through here and there, and add a certain something. Okay, so not looking too bad at this point. I've got a recognisable uh, jacket, shirt, a sort of a necktie, and a corset. So what I'm going to do is uh, cook this whole thing, and little bit worried um, I don't think the heat's going to do too much to the epoxy or to the resin you don't have to cook sculpey at a particularly high temperature nevertheless you know putting your whole thing in the oven um, is a little bit nerve-wracking but we're gonna give it a go I mean, to be fair I have done this before with um, previous um, sculptures and I know that the resin can handle the temperature it just goes a little bit soft for a while so I think this will be fine but um, we'll see Okay, so there we go. So the sculpture did uh, survive, but as you can see, we've got some fairly significant cracks. Uh, that's not a problem. I'm going to be filling those in, sanding the whole thing down, and the whole thing's going to be painted, so we won't see these on the final version. So now that I've got my clothing uh, cooked and um, that's now hard, I can now come in and start adding some further detail on top of this. So I'm looking at adding a belt here that's going to go over the uh, waist of the uh, sculpture. Now, one thing I needed to consider was that corsets usually have some lacing at the back, and this is the back of the sculpture, you're probably not going to see it, but I'm still trying to be quite um, detailed with this sculpture and add in as much detail as I can. So I started to consider how I might do the lacing on the back, and my initial attempt was to twist up some wire and do a sort of a crosshatch uh, pattern on the back. The belt that I'm trying to sculpt in is going to go across this, so I need to get that lacing in place before I do the belt. Um, ultimately the wire approach I didn't think really worked it didn't quite look right so what I ended up doing was to use some green stuff um, which is another type of epoxy to do this design here the lacing of course it tends not to be across uh, in the way I originally had it and tends to look a little bit more like this so um, this was I wasn't quite sure how easy this would be to do um, obviously it's quite a repetitive thing and it's quite fiddly uh, but what I did was use a silicon tipped uh, sculpting tool to sort of tease the uh, green stuff into place epoxies generally tend to be quite sticky and green stuff is, is very much that way so this was a little bit tricky but uh, because it was sticky it did actually attach itself to the uh, to the clay quite nicely so ultimately I got that in place but um, I didn't film it so it was a little bit um, tricky to do so now that's in place I can now bring my belt um, around the back and um, start putting that in
I've also made myself a buckle out of some aluminium and I just use a chisel there to um, cut out a square in the centre. The character's going to have a holster on her leg, so I'm just doing the beginnings of a um, strap coming down to hold that in place. As you can see, I've actually put some um, some of the skirt in place um, on the uh, on the back there. And what I'm trying to do is have a separating line because uh, the skirt's going to be removable for um, for ease of transport. So I'm thinking the belt that goes down to the holster can be the dividing line there. So I've skipped ahead a little bit there, and as you can see, I've got my belt in place. Um, I actually cooked the sculpture again to to finalise that since it's sculpy. As you can see, I have the front of the skirt in place there as well, and again, that's sculpy, so I'm going to have to cook the uh, sculpture again uh, to, to finalise that piece as well. But that should be the last piece of sculpy work I'm doing on the main body. Well, so one of the main ideas I had for this was to have a flowing skirt, which is sort of blowing the wind. And I got the idea from this sculpture here, which is of uh, Asajj Ventress, a Star Wars character. This is a sideshow piece, but I really like the flowing robe they have here. It's very dynamic and I really like that look. So I wanted to include something like that in my sculpture. So what I'm doing is to drill some holes in the back of the sculpture to put some anchor points in. I'm gonna use some uh, square brass tube to do that. So what I'm going to do is use some mesh to create a uh, basic armature for this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use some aluminium wire, which is attached to some square brass tube. Then I can attach the mesh to that. I'll start looking something like that. So I'm just super gluing this mesh on top of the aluminium wire um, and because it's uh, bendy you can get quite a nice flowing sort of shape to it. So I'm using some more Sculpey to actually build up the uh, basic shape of the skirt here. I also decided to further extend this so what I've done is to use some glass fibre um, which you can just glue in place quite easily. I'm then going to come over this with some resin, uh, using roto-casting resin in this case, and that will just give me a nice firm shape to sculpt against. So I'm also starting to look at the head and the face, and obviously this is going to be a bit of a focal point of the uh, sculpture, so I want to make sure that that looks, uh, looks really as good as it can. So what I've done is to buy some miniature glass eyes. I've used these on projects before, my Tywin Lannister uh, sculpture from some years back. Um, they, they really add a certain something, I think, and they can also take the heat from the Sculpey, uh, so that's, um, that's always useful. Now I want the character to have quite an intense look and she's going to be looking forward and firing a gun. So I want the head to be sort of forward and the eyes sort of looking up, uh, focusing on the target. So I'm just trying to get the orientation of the eyes correct. I'm just trying to get the uh, furrowed brow correct as well. As you can see, I've made the head removable uh, with some more square brass tube. That's because you really need to have the head um, at loads of different angles as you're sculpting. So if this were attached to the main body, it would make it really, really tricky to sculpt. So having the head separate is, um, is, def is definitely needed. So now trying to add some hair in, and there's sort of two things going on with the hair, where firstly, because the dress is blowing, I figured the hair should as well, so I'm just trying to get the hair um, in the correct sort of shape to look as though it's blowing in the wind. Um, the hair actually turned out to be one of the most tricky bits um, in the sculpture. I've not done that much hair sculpture, I don't think, and so um, it took me quite a while to sort of get a look that I was happy with. The other thing I wanted to do was to have some goggles um, on her head, and because uh, she's got quite a lot of hair, these are going to be sort of embedded in the hair. So what I'm doing is to make some uh, miniature brass goggles out of brass uh, and then sort of embed those in the Sculpey. So again, they can take the heat when I actually cook a Sculpey um, and they should look quite nice. So I'm just trying to get those into the correct position and then sort of sculpt the hair around them so they look like they're naturally sitting on her head. I actually ended up repositioning them um, after my first placement because I think they're a little bit too low. 
So now moving on to looking at the boots. And this is something I wanted to make a lot of effort with. Um, often you might tend to shy away from doing this sort of thing because the laces are quite complicated and quite repetitive. And particularly um, with Sculpey, I wasn't quite sure if I'd actually be able to sculpt these with Sculpey. Um, the reason being is because obviously you'd have to get everything exact and correct before you cook the Sculpey. And particularly if you're trying to push laces into boot holes, well, if you're pushing against a boot hole, which is just soft clay, you run the risk of just deforming that straight away. So it seemed to me that there wasn't really an easy way of doing this in Sculpey, and so I decided to do the boots entirely in epoxy. So I began with making some brass shapes for the uh, undersoles of the boots. Um, obviously you need something hard to press against when you're sculpting, so I wanted to make sure there was basically an armature in place uh, for me to push the epoxy against. So I'm just super gluing these uh, pieces in place. Something I've also had problems with is if you're doing high heeled boots, you need to make sure that the anchor points for the sculpture go through the heels, so you can actually have a gap underneath the shoe. So the positioning of all of this was quite tricky to make sure I got it all correct, but I think I managed to work it out okay, so it's not looking too bad. So as you can see, what I'm doing is to just uh, build up some shape. So I started off doing the basic form in free form sculpt, and then I've come in with some Aves epoxy on top of that uh, for the detailing. So it's just a question of slowly building up the shapes here. I did one batch, gave it half an hour, came back and did another batch. And so I slowly built up the details that way. I also found myself doing a lot of sanding with this as well. So I'd wait till the epoxy had fully cured. I'd then sand it down before adding additional shapes to it. And that was just a way of getting a really smooth finish to the shapes I was creating. There's only so smooth you can get them with sculpting tools. Once I have the basic shape of the boots in place, I could then come in and start adding detail on top of that. So what I'm doing here is detailing the edges of the boots where the laces will go. And what I'm doing is scratching the surface of the cured epoxy. And that just creates something for the uh, next layer to grab onto. I'm then coming in with some additional pieces of epoxy, shaping that in as best I can. Then once it's cured, I'm sanding it down to get a smooth finish and then adding more on top. And so with that process, I can slowly build up detail and layers onto the boot. Now that, that detail's set and I've got it shaped correctly, I'm now coming in and drilling some holes, and this is where the laces will go. So now that I've got my lace holes drilled in, now the tricky part, putting the actual laces in. And as I said, I think this is something that I would uh, really struggle with to, uh, to do this in Sculpey, simply because you're going to deform all of those uh, boot holes that you've put in as you press the clay into the holes. So having something firm to sculpt against was really, really useful here. So I really just took some very thin blobs of um, epoxy, pushed them into place, and slowly shaped them as best I can. Um, the cool thing about the epoxy is as it cures, it gets much tougher. And there's a certain sort of point where it's sort of quite tough but still a little bit malleable and so at that stage it's quite easy to sort of shave off some pieces with a Stanley blade if you need to to sort of get a nice smooth edge so for things like laces it was actually quite useful because I could just slowly chop them down if they were a little bit too thick but again I would do this in in layers basically I would do the laces that were at the back first and once they were cured I would then come in and do the uh, top level detail on top of that so yeah just the process of slowly building up detail with this and actually once I sort of had the process down, the laces didn't take quite as long as I actually thought they would. Uh, so that was quite cool. So I needed to have a knot uh, for the laces and some sort of laces hanging down in the front of the boot. Now, I can't really sculpt that um, very easily. So what I've done is use some wire here and I've just um, drilled a hole in the front of the boot and uh, glued in the wire in place there. What I'm gonna do to hide that join is have a strap coming across the front of the boot, covering it. And then I can sculpt in the um, sort of join from the, uh, from the wire to the epoxy laces there. So that should hopefully hide the transition. From this point on, I think my confidence with epoxy had grown quite considerably. So I actually stopped using Sculpey entirely. Um, I had started sculpting this section of the dress with Sculpey, but I decided to actually get rid of that and actually use epoxy in its place. So for this, I started uh, sculpting the edge of the dress in with epoxy. And something else I needed to do was actually do um, the arm as well. So um, this arm is gonna be holding a sort of a uh, steampunk power glove. So I decided to do the entire thing in epoxy as well. So again, same process, slowly building this up. Um, I started with an armature, as you can see, and then just slowly started building up detail and detail. Now, because this was gonna be sort of shaped leather, I wanted a sort of a smooth finish to it anyway. So I would again, put the shapes in as best I could, smooth them as best I could but once it was dry I could then come in and sand it down to get an even smoother finish. <laughs> 
I also added to the Sculpey even further by um, sculpting on top of that with epoxy. So in this case, I'm actually extending the collar of the costume up further and just adding some epoxy on top of the Sculpey to do that. So at this point I started thinking about the rest of the sculpture. I wanted to have quite an elaborate base for it and I like the idea of the uh, sculpture standing on a balcony with a sort of a steampunk uh, background in place. And I started thinking about having a sort of large brass um, face looking out. Maybe it's a sculpture, maybe it's a robot, I mean who knows, but I wanted it to um, have, have a sort of a a domineering presence I guess behind the sculpture and I wanted it to sort of frame the sculpture as well so to that end what I'm doing is sculpting up a face uh, which is going to be a uh, sort of a, a brass sculpture effectively now I have done this sort of thing before um, from from some years back you may remember this piece um, which has got that sort of um, retro sci-fi kind of um, industrial look to it so I wanted to do something like that and so I'm sculpting up this face here in monster clay I'm using some uh, large 15 mil ball bearings for eyes here I've got a few resin pieces in place uh, which are going to sort of cover where the ears would be and I'm thinking these would connect to some machinery. Right, so that's not looking too bad and there's my previous piece um, next to it in, uh, for comparison. I was just using that as a bit of a guide to get the face right. Something I also decided to do was this gargoyle. Um, I want the uh, base to be quite elaborate and, uh, and sort of, well, look quite detailed so I decided to do a gargoyle which can sit underneath um, some of the detailing and add some sort of further sculptural detail to, to the base. So for the gargoyle and for the uh, main face that I've made, I'm going to make moulds of those so I can cast out resin copies. Oops, so there's my gargoyle, not looking too bad. And for the main face, I'm just going to make a jacket mould uh, for this. Now you've seen me do this a gazillion times, so if you want to know more about this process, uh, have a look at my uh, moulding and casting skulls video. Uh, so it's exactly the same process here, just cover the whole thing in silicon, let it drip down, and then make a hard case over the top of that to hold everything in place. Right, so there's my mould, and there's my cast piece, so that's looking pretty good I think. And he's going to sit behind the sculpture, something like this. So I started making the base out of wood and as I mentioned I want this to be like a balcony so I've sort of made a basic shape out of um, wood and there's actually some bits of old desk in here as well um, and I'm just trying to build this up as best I can. Now I want to have some uh, railings, uh, some stone railings so what I'm doing is making a spindle here on the lathe and what I'm going to do is uh, make a master for this and then cast up multiples. I want to have the barrier sort of complete on one side and then smashed on the other side so I can make um, copies of this and then just cut them down to however I need. Now for the base, um, as I said it's made of wood and what I'm going to do is cover this in plastic to hide the wood grain. What I've also got is this um, decorative um, dado rail, it's a scale um, dado rail which is for dolls houses, I've, I've had it for years but I think it's going to be really good here so I'm just cutting this to shape and gluing that on to add some further sculptural detail to the base. And I've also got some pieces of old desk which have got some detail cutting with the router um, so I'm just going to add these on as well and I've still got the router so I can cut some more up if I need to. So there's my uh, spindles in place uh, so that's looking pretty good so you can sort of get an idea of how this is going to look. So really it was a slow process of building this up and adding additional detail as I went. The majority of this is made of wood and I've just covered it in plastic um, where needed to hide the, uh, hide the wood grain. Now I wanted the head to have some mechanical detailing behind it so what I've done is to attach it to a board here with some uh, pillow block bearings holding it in place and what I'm doing is just dressing the entire thing with bits of old uh, VHS machines. I collected tons of these a while back so they're really good for mechanical um, bits and bobs so what I'm going to do is just put a bunch of these behind the uh, head and you won't see a lot of these in the final sculpture but um, they're there if, um, if people do go looking you know and they add a sort of a degree of detail um, within the sculpture itself so I think that's looking pretty good.
also want to add some additional detail to the head. And what I've got here are these are pieces I actually made for my demon robot a while back. That's a cool thing, um, having made uh, loads of different bits and pieces, I've got molds for loads of different mechanical bits now. So it's quite easy for me to actually just build up mechanical shapes because I can just use copies of things I've made for previous projects. And there's one new thing here, which is a sort of curved bracket, which is holding it in place. And again, I just made a mold of that and cast up multiples. So that just allows me to very easily build up uh, mechanical detailing very quickly and so you can see how the uh, the final piece is going to look there i still want to do some additional detailing on the face but you get the basic idea of how that's going to look what i also did was to cast up some uh, these are decorative buttons uh, which i got a while back and i wanted to add some more additional sculptural detail to the base so i think these look really really good um, as sort of uh, detail pieces so i've just made up some resin copies of these and i can glue those across the model to add additional worm detail I also needed to add a gun to the end of the character's hand and um, I did do a hand a while back but as you can see she's holding the uh, handle in a bit of a weird way um, handles generally tend to be angled forwards and for some reason I sculpted this with the handle directly up so it just doesn't look very natural so I've done a new hand on this on the gun and so I can actually replace that with a new one. Right, so there we go. So that's where we are so far. Now I'm fairly far through this project now, so I'm sort of on the home stretch. Uh, so this is looking pretty good. There's still a fair amount of detailing to do to it, but I will save that for the next piece of the video. So if you made it this far, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting more videos on this project and others, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.